Good afternoon, and a warm welcome to Good Shepherd Parish. Today we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Our Mass intention is for Peter Neal. Our celebrant today is Father Austin, assisted by Deacon Colum. Today there will be a special second collection to support the Retirement Fund for Women Religious. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. All of the music and readings for today's Mass can be found in the Breaking Bread missiles in front of you, as well as in the bulletins located at the entrances of the church. Let us stand and turn to greet our neighbor. <coughs> now would you please join me in singing our gathering song, number 733, Crown Him With Many Crowns, number 733. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Lord and King of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Lord and King of the universe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us always at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It doesn't often happen this way, but today the, the first two readings share a, a common theme. The first, we have, we have it now from the prophet Daniel. Daniel is a kind of a mystic, and he speaks of the coming of the Son of Man. Son of man is a term in the scriptures that is defined in, oh, maybe 15 or 20 ways. Um, sometimes it means Israel, sometimes it means a speaker, it could mean Daniel, it could mean one of the archangels, it could be any number of people. But Daniel speaks about the son of man who will receive dominion, glory, and kingship. We'll find a, an echo of this in the second reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm can be found on page seven of the bulletin.
Daniel, the prophet in our first reading, never met John, who wrote the book of Revelation. But John seems to have known what Daniel wrote. John is speaking about Jesus, but he speaks of him in exactly the same imagery that Daniel does. Coming amid the clouds, every eye will see him. He is the one who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty, the Sovereign. Jesus is the Son of Man. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Lord, Lord, Lord. pilate said to jesus are you the king of the jews jesus answered do you say this on your own or have others told you about me pilate answered i am not a jew am i your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pius XI, uh, in 1925, which is almost 100 years ago, promulgated this feast in the church. And it's universally accepted. It's a very popular feast of Christ the King, which is unusual for something that is quite recent in the church's history. Monarchy, for Americans, should be foreign. <laughs> uh, 
we are a democratic republic. Uh, I did not grow up in the United States. I grew up in Northern Ireland, and we had a monarchy. And uh, Queen Elizabeth II celebrated her 25th jubilee when I was in junior high school in 1977. And my attitude toward the monarch at that time was probably similar to, I don't know, the way the kids see Beyonce or Taylor Swift. I mean, someone foreign, different, cool, whatever. I mean, everybody seemed to like her, great. Uh, but it didn't, she wasn't thankfully a monarch with uh, power or um, she couldn't make laws or anything like that. So we weren't supposed to obey her. The kind of issues would, I think that Pope Pius XI was dealing with in 1925 in Italy when Mussolini came to power, he was the kind of leader that people were supposed to obey. In Russia, the communists had the kind of leadership where people were forced to obey. And we know about what happened in Germany starting then and a few years later where another totalitarian state took place and obeying was part of what you were supposed to do to the lead, for the leader. And I think Pius XI recognized the fear that people had and their willingness to respond to this fear by giving up control to, this, to these authoritarian leaders. It was a response of fear. To a, to, and when someone says, I alone can make it better, people were willing to believe them. In the Old Testament, uh, at the time of the judges, people cried out for a king. They wanted a king like their neighboring countries had, had a king. And they wanted, to, uh, they wanted to be like their neighboring countries, which is a warning sign for the, uh, the first part. And they traded their freedom for this so-called security and safety. In the 1920s, totalitarianism wasn't just in Europe. In Mexico, a group of Marxist leaders in this more than 90% Catholic country decided that the church should be illegal. So you know how you say goodbye in Spanish, adios? You weren't allowed to say that because Dios is God, to God. You can't say, you had to say something else for goodbye. Or if God wills it, si Dios quiere, you weren't allowed to say that. The churches were closed, burned down. Nuns and priests were slaughtered. But there arose a movement of opposition to this totalitarian regime called the Cristeros. And one very famous member of the Cristeros Cristeros was a 14-year-old boy. His name was Jose Sanchez del Rio. And he's not canonized yet, but hopefully in our lifetime he will be. But he was captured by the authorities, and the magistrate that condemned this young boy to death happened to be his godfather, the guy who stood for him at his Catholic baptism. And Truthfully, he was reluctant to sentence him to death as the government wanted him to do, and he, he tried to um, get his family to pay a $5,000 ransom so he wouldn't be killed. But Jose Sanchez del Rio famously said, my faith is not for sale. Tortured and martyred, his last words were, Viva Cristo Rey. Long live Christ the King. This young man responded to fear with trust in God. In the face of what we can't control, he surrendered to God's will.
Christ has lordship of our life, socially, professionally, academically, our family life. God is the, Jesus is the Lord of our lives. So many of you, like me, have been to weddings recently, and we uh, love it. We, we enjoy when people write their vows and share them with their partner. It's a beautiful thing, always brings a tear to the eye. But, but what we lost with that is the old vows, right, to, to love, honor, and obey our partners. So maybe it's just not cool to say, obey my partner, to be submissive to my partner. Maybe that's why that has gone out of fashion. But let's think about what obeying or being under the mission, submission to our partner is. If the mission of our partner is to bring us closer to God. So, so we surrender in obedience to our, our partner by obeying, by listening to what they have to say, by honoring them and loving them. And so this is a, this is a king we can't control, but we trust. Our king is presented on the cross. His throne is an unlikely throne and his, cross, and his crown is not made of jewels and gold, but of cruel and brutal thorns. He is the king of the universe, the God king who has dominion over the world, but chooses not to dominate it. He is God that we cannot control but he is God, our king, who we can fully trust. In the face of fear, we get to choose obedience over control, trust over fear. Viva Cristo Rey. Let us stand and profess our faith. <clears throat> Together, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Bible before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, unchanged, and Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit was born from the Virgin Mary and the King of Mary. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I have met one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's open our hearts in prayer and with confidence that God hears us. For the church, that conforming our hearts to Christ, we bear witness to the kingdom of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For conversion of heart, that striving for holiness, we leave behind sin and earthly attachments to be transformed by God's grace, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that recognizing God as the sovereign Lord of his creation, all who exercise power do so with humility and service. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, that the rights and dignity proper to God's children be upheld, and that all realize their identity as servants of the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those persecuted for their faith, that they find the courage to persevere in the truth and be delivered from their suffering, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Daniel Kerrigan, whose funeral was celebrated Saturday, that he be received into eternal life and that his loved ones find solace in God's mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that they find eternal rest in the tender embrace of God. And today we pray especially for Peter Neal, for whom we offer this mass. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our parish prayer books and for those we hold in the silence of our heart, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, gracious God, we pray, and in your mercy answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. During the preparation rite, let us join in singing number 470, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 470. Well, my apology, uh, I was given no notice that there was going to be a second collection, so we fleeced you twice and you don't know why. The second collection today was for the uh, sisters in the Archdiocese of Boston to help with their, their, uh, in their needs as, as they grow older and sick and infirm. So whatever you gave, we are very grateful for what you gave. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of his name. For all the good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. With angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
to St. Anne, St. Zephyrin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. confidence, let us pray to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During communion, let us join in singing number 344, Gift of Finest Wheat. 
number 
having received the food of immortality, we ask, O oh Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. If you came in the front entrances of the church, you saw uh, several tables filled with uh, beautiful wood carvings. And we have a guest, Adam, who's going to speak to you about those. Hi, my name is Adam Gary. I was born and raised in Bethlehem, the Holy Land, so please excuse my accent. I'm here to support the Christian families in the Holy Land by selling their handicrafted olive wood religious items. I have five tables in the market with, <coughs> with a big selection of crucifix, nativity sets, rosaries, ornament statues, and many more things. That is what the big majority of Christians do for living in the Holy Land. They rely on selling this item to, to tourists who come and visit, but as you know the situation in the Holy Land, the tourism industry is completely shut down due to the war happening now. The Christian families have lost their jobs because over 80% of the families in Bethlehem and Jerusalem rely on tourism industry. It's really sad to see our Lord land in a war situation. And we as a Christian have always been stuck in the middle between the Muslim and the Jews and between their fightings. I brought with me a crucifix to show you an example of their work. This is olive wood and the, and the wood is hundreds of years old. The carver chose the olive tree because it's mentioned in the Bible so many times. <clears throat> and Jesus has blessed the olive tree. I would like to mention what inside the classes on each end. At the bottom they bought They bought stones from Jerusalem, flowers from Jerusalem as well, and frankincense and olive leaf from Bethlehem. Please consider this great opportunity to help your brothers and sisters in the Holy Land, or another opportunity to buy your beloved ones a special gift, not made in China, made in the Holy Land. This craft make a beautiful gift for any special occasions or maybe Christmas shopping. So I would like to invite all of you to come and look up their works. They have the beautiful things and they are not asking for donation. They want to give you something from the Holy Land. It's really tough in the Holy Land and through the years the Christians have suffered from the war, violence, discrimination and many, and many continue to leave the country. So buying their craft today will help them provide for, the, for their families and they stay in the Holy Land. Before I, know, before I go, I know I told you a lot of bad news about the Holy Land and the Christian struggle. I have some good news to share with you. The good news is that Zeus Carver accepts credit card checks and cash. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. So even if you came in the front doors, I suggest you exit by the back doors so you can see what's out there, okay? It's beautiful. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks Thank be to God. God. As we go forth, let us join in singing number 736 to Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, number 736. To Jesus. 